If you're like me, you look at a Bodhi plot almost every day without giving a second thought to how you generate one. My name is James and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. In this video, I show you three ways that you can use to create a Bodhi plot. Then at the end, I have a question for you to answer on the Element 14 community. With that, let's go plot. Bode plots graph the frequency response of a system or device. The x-axis is frequency with logarithmic scaling. The y-axis plots magnitude as decibels, which is a ratio of the output to input of the system. dBs are already log, so this chart is log log. By the way, a decade frequency is a ratio of 10, like 1000 to 10,000. And an octave is a ratio of 2. For example, 1000 to 2000 is one octave, while 2000 to 4000 is another. A frequency response for a single pole amplifier may look like this. We can see the DC gain and the knee frequency, which is 3 dB down from there. Here is the 20 dB per decade roll-off, and the unity bandwidth is at 0 dB. In addition to magnitude, a Bode plot can also show phase difference between the input and output signal. There should be a 45 degree phase shift at the 3 dB point. Then the phase when the magnitude hits 0 dB is part of determining the phase margin. And when the phase wraps around at 180 degrees, that marks the gain margin. If you are new to this stuff, I know that is a lot to take in, but the scope of this video is how to draw one of those plots from measurements. But before we get to that, take a look at this example from a simulation. This non-inverting amplifier with a TL081 shows the DC gain, negative 3 dB point, unity bandwidth, phase margin, and gain margin which is great for the simulator, but what about when we want to build a real circuit and see its performance? Well, let's take a look at multiple ways to draw real Bode plots. For all of the measurements I show, I built a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of two using an LM358. I carefully selected the two feedback resistors so that they closely matched. I know in the simulation I showed a TL081, but I come back to Y at the end. For now, I'm going to turn the video over to my official intern. Hello, I am the intern. Today, I will show you how to use a function generator on an operational amplifier to make measurements with an oscilloscope. Um, you know what? Why don't you let me take this section? Why don't you go and solder something for a little bit? Okay. Anyway, the scope is measuring the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the input and output, the phase difference between them, and the signal's frequency for reference. I also turned on the built-in 20 MHz limit on each channel, set the ADC to 14 bits, and enabled waveform averaging. By the way, most scopes have the 20 MHz limit and waveform averaging, but they don't let you set the number of bits. Now, we could just start at DC and measure like 10 or so frequency points, like we did in school, but instead we can quickly start with a few good points. For example, let's start with something low like 100 Hz. That's effectively the DC gain. Now we just dial up the frequency until the phase hits about 45 degrees, and that phase occurs around 280 kilohertz. In a spreadsheet, I record the frequency, voltage in, out, and the phase. Now we dial up the frequency until the phase hits around 180 degrees. Along the way, on the scope, I adjust the time base to keep a few cycles on screen and the vertical to keep the waveform relatively large. These changes help the scope to make the best measurement that it can. Turns out this frequency is around 1.5 megahertz. I record that, the voltages, and the phase as negative 180 in the spreadsheet. Then I determine some in-between frequencies so that we can capture some more data points. Also, I change the frequency format to engineering notation so the numbers make more sense. Now we can go back to the intern and have them measure each of those frequencies and record the three measurements in the spreadsheet. Hopefully he does not make any mistakes. When he is done, we can continue working on our plot. First. For each point, we need to calculate the gain using 20 times the log of output over input. Then we need to create an inverse of the phase. Hold on to see why. Also, there's not much of a point to having so many decimal points. Now I can create a smooth line chart and ta-da, we have a plot. But wait, that doesn't really look right. First we need to set the x-axis to frequency and remove the extra series. Then let's move the phase to the alternate axis. Remember, Bode plots are logarithmic, so we need to change the x-axis to log scale. The graph is starting to look correct, but it's not quite done. The phase probably should not go up like that, which is why we did the negative phase column so that it plots correctly. 
And for a bonus to fix the labels in Google Sheets anyway, format the number as negative hashtag semicolon hashtag. And now we have a Bodhi plot. But unless you have an intern, that takes a lot of work and is very error prone. There has to be a better way. There is. Let's take a look at two of them. In a previous video, we talked about network analyzers with the Pico VNA. These RF instruments measure magnitude and phase across frequency and display the values as <clears throat> a Bode plot. But VNAs like that one only go down to 300 kilohertz. That's above the usable range of our op amp circuit. So instead, we can use a lower frequency network analyzer like the Analog Discovery 2. These USB-based instruments have about 10 megahertz of bandwidth and using the BNC adapter, it is super easy to hook up probes to our circuit. In the waveform software, there is a network analysis tool. Here we set the start and stop frequency, how many points to measure in between, and the input signal's amplitude. Then you hit run and see how it goes. Unlike the intern, this tool is quick. When done, we can use the cursor to find things like the 3 dB point, unity frequency, or the gain margin at the 180 degree wrap. You can even use two cursors to verify the slope is 20 dB per decade. The most obvious advantage of this approach is how fast you can iterate. If you wanna change the gain of the amplifier or some other part of it, go for it. Or see what happens when you change the input signal from 500 millivolts to say two volts. Hmm, isn't it interesting how the 3 dB point changed from 200 kilohertz to 50 kilohertz? Also, if you're only dealing with five volts or less, the Analog Discovery 2 can even power the test circuit. So in terms of speed and repeatability, a low frequency network analyzer is a big upgrade over manual measurements, but we need to cover one more option. Most oscilloscopes introduced after 2017 with a built-in arbitrary waveform generator have a frequency response analysis software option. This option uses the scope's generator as the circuit input in two analog channels to compare the input and output of the circuit. Like before, you give it a start and stop frequency, the number of points to measure, and you usually have a way to set the input voltage level. Oscilloscopes using FRA plots will take longer than what we saw with the Analog Discovery 2, but they are usually more accurate. After the sweep runs, the result is a gain and phase plot like the network analyzer. There are tools like markers and automated measurements. This particular software makes the gain and phase margins very obvious. Again, automated software makes it fast to test another circuit. Like for example, let's do a sweep on this TL081. See, exactly like the other plots. Going back to the semi-basic multi-comp pro scope, hidden in the utility menu is an FRA option. Like, for real, I accidentally found that when I was recording stuff and thought, hmm, I should probably show that. Anyway, you might be wondering which of these is best. Well, going back to the manual method, I skipped over how the output waveform looked after one megahertz. It is really bad. So if you just blindly followed the numbers on any of these examples, you would have missed how distorted the output waveform got. So no matter what, I would at least use a scope to look at the critical points from the plot. Also, all three tools involved two things, a waveform generator and an oscilloscope. On the Analog Discovery 2, I just sort of hand waved over the oscilloscope function. That said, there are low frequency network analyzers that do not have a real-time oscilloscope capability. So that means two things. They can't go down to DC, like actual zero hertz DC, and it means that they can't give you a real-time waveform of the signals. So keep those in mind if you're looking at one of those. But I think the important takeaway here is that as long as you have tools that can generate a waveform and capture the waveform, then you can create body plots for your circuits. At the beginning of this video, I showed a simulation of the TL081, but for most of it, I showed measurements with an LM358. Here's the thing. This is the simulation and the measured body plots for that TL081 circuit. Notice anything odd? Well, follow the link to the Element 14 community and let me know why you think they are different. Speaking of the community, in order to focus on the tools, I had to gloss over a bunch of details. Check out the show notes over there for a ton of links to related content. Remember, that is the best place to ask me questions because I am way more likely to see them and then be able to answer them. Also, let me know if you have other ways to generate Bodhi plots. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is... Oh, 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 what oh, are oh, you oh, doing?